Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm AJ. And this is Finder Seekers. Where we take deep dives into shallow topics. Yeah, we do. Nope. But why should you trust us, other than clearly we're very smart, we have elbow patches. We're both pop culture lovers from the entertainment industry. I come from the world of visual effects with a doctorate in the movie sciences. And I am a television actor with a degree in psychology. Do you actually have a degree in psychology? Yeah. You didn't know that? Today, we'll be focusing on Easter eggs. And how they've been used for more than just granting Stan Lee eternal life. But let's back up. What is an Easter egg? Well, a pretentious man might say an Easter egg is a hidden reference in a work of art, usually a work of pop culture that is meant to engage an astute viewer in a way that is outside the normal narrative convention. This is nothing new. Literature has been doing this for literally centuries, only they call it illusions. The two most common being classical illusions, ancient Greek Easter eggs, and biblical illusions. Even Easter eggs are Easter eggs to the original pagan holiday that Easter comes from. Viewing a film through this lens has become extremely popular in recent years due to new viewing habits. A viewer can watch a film frame by frame, pick out an amusing observation or continuity error, point it out, upload it to the internet, and become famous. Or, or at least internet famous. Which is like being regular famous, except you're in a basement. Eating Funyuns. We don't have Funyuns. Though consumer technology has led to an increase in Easter eggs to help expand the viewing experience, throughout history they have taken on some important, less obvious roles. Michelangelo, yes, that Michelangelo, used Easter eggs for political protest. In The Last Judgment, you can actually find his frenemy rotting in hell. When discovered, the Cardinals pleaded with the Pope to order Michelangelo to change it. The Pope refused, citing he holds no dominion over what happens in hell. Sick burn, Pope. Burn. In hell. Van Eck, the famous Dutch painter, used Easter eggs to individualize his Arnolfini portrait. You can find him in the mirror reflection as a sort of signature. At this time in history, taking credit for your work was such an uncommon practice that no other painter in the Netherlands even signed their work, which is actually pretty admirable. As recently as 20 years ago, Subaru used Easter eggs to lend solidarity to the lesbian community at the height of homophobia in the 1990s by adding in symbols that would have been familiar to the gay rights movement. Though by definition these were all Easter eggs, the term wasn't coined until 1979 when Atari released a game called Adventure for the Atari 2600. Which, if you haven't played it, it's a lot like Zelda if you took out all of it. At the time, Atari didn't let programmers credit themselves in the game, afraid the competitors would try to steal them. You mean poach them? Because when we're, we're talking about Easter eggs. To get around this, the programmer, Warren Robinett, took a cue from Van Eck and made it so if you moved over a specific pixel in a specific part of the game, a message popped up. Programmed by Warren Robinett. Instead of being mad about it, the director of software development, Steve Wright, said they should put more of these secret messages in future games, like Easter eggs for consumers to find. Now an episode about Easter eggs may seem like a cheap grab for those sweet YouTubes. And that's because it is. But it has also become a legitimate way for fans to interact with their favorite works of pop culture. And we do not think that anyone's doing enough to dig past the obligatory red circle of just pointing out they exist. That's our episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you have a favorite historical Easter egg, please comment down below. You might be acknowledged on a future episode. Uh, or if there's a specific movie or television show or fan theory or like maybe you just have a theory that no one believes you, but you really want to tell someone, we, we don't have anything else to do. So... Comment below. And we might turn it into an episode. Yeah. Thanks so much. Until next time, I'm AJ. I'm also AJ. We're the AJs. <laughs> AJs. Matt's dead. This is Finder Seekers. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>